On this one, you got to stick around to the ending. It's a real shocker. Take it away, Jack. Having backup power isn't very useful if it's not ready to go when that emergency arrives. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to show you how I go about testing my solar system to be used in case of a, an emergency or a contingency. I live in northwest Florida, which is hurricane zone, and six months out of the year, we could possibly have a hurricane. That's how long the season lasts. So we have had situations where we'd had no power for 12 or 14 days, and that does not make for a very good time without uh, lights and air conditioning and hot water for showers and things like that. Part of my contingency plan is that if my home loses power, I have my RV. So to power the RV, I do have a generator, but that takes propane, and I'd like to use my solar system to power the RV as much as I can. Now I know that the RV's air conditioners consume more power than what I can generate with my 800 watt solar system, so air conditioning is pretty much out of the question unless I want to run a generator. Here in the RV there are several things that are always powered up and there's nothing I can do. They're like vampire drains on my batteries and system. That's the entertainment system is there, the carbon monoxide detector is there. I run a dehumidifier all the time in the RV and it's 110. When it's running, it's drawing a little over five amps of power. That's a lot of power. So my plan is to use the generator and fully charge my batteries here today. And once they're fully charged, I'm going to switch over to solar power. I want to start the test at about 12 o'clock today. That's usually when my solar system goes into float mode. Now float mode means that the charge controller for the solar system has the batteries fully charged. They're topped off and it's just maintaining that top state of charge. So with the solar system fully charged, I'll go ahead and plug the RV into it and I'm going to run it for one week. Each day around noontime, I'll come out and check the status of the solar system batteries to make sure they're not being over discharged. And I don't really think they will be unless there were several days of uh, little to no sun. I've looked at the forecast and for the next week we really only have one day that's forecast to be uh, raining. So that's, that's really good. At the start of the test, the charge controller is in float mode only drawing about 7 or 8 watts. As I activate the inverter, it is actually drawing power itself. So it will start to stabilize initially going up to 170, 180 watts, but it should stabilize a little lower than that. The reading we see here at about 95 watts is going to be a constant load even before I plug in the RV. With the RV plugged in, the power consumption spikes up to almost 400 watts. This is due to the converter in the RV trying to top off the RV batteries and the dehumidifier running. The dehumidifier is on a thermostat so it will turn itself off and on and without it running the constant load should be around 175 watts. Before discussing the actual results, I wanted to talk a little bit about battery state of charge. On this graphic here, I've got it laid out for both 12 volt and 24 volt systems. Since my system is a 24 volt, look at that right hand most column. At 100%, the battery should be reading about 25.46 volts when the battery is resting. And as you go through and graduate down into the light green and the yellow, the lowest safe area would be at 60% or 24.48 volts. I would not ever want to take the batteries lower than that. So here are the results we've been waiting for. On day one, the lowest Battery voltage recorded was 24.8 volts, putting it right at the 70% discharge rate. Day two, it dropped further down to 24.6 volts. And on day three, I was really 
surprised to see it at 24.2 volts. And to further adversely impact the batteries, throughout the entire test the charge controller never went to the float mode, which means that the batteries never in the three-day period got up to full charge. Seeing these results, I uh, literally pulled the plug on the test. I stopped the test right there. I was uh, seriously concerned that I may be doing permanent damage to my batteries. So now it's a uh, all recovery process, determining where I need to go from this point in terms of upgrading my system either by adding more solar panels and or possibly upgrading my battery bank. So I'll put a little more research into that and determine which way I need to go and which way is going to be the most cost effective for me. Hope you enjoyed this video and just maybe you learned something. I know I certainly learned a lot from this experience. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and ring the little notification bell so you will get notified of all of my future videos. I'm placing links to my other solar project videos right here. So until next time, thanks for watching.